this is what I came up with. First, we want to declare all the variables and the arrays. And second, we need to perform the summation over all time steps. In other words, we need to evaluate this equ uh, equation. And three, we need to get some output and we're probably going to plot some output. So very similar to what we had for our Maxwell's equations model. For the first section, we need to calculate dt. So here, we're going to need a value for dt because you can see that right here. We are going to need that in our summation. Now this dt must match the dt in the Maxwell's equations code if we want to calculate the spectrum of our source as our Maxwell's equations code will see it. So as a result, you can probably copy over some lines from your Maxwell's equations model. For example, the lines declaring the values of C, S, and Nmax can be copied over, as well as our calculation of dt. The only difference now is that we want to make sure to set delta equal to 4.3e to the minus 3 rather than 1 meter like we had earlier. We also need to, to specify which frequencies at which we want to evaluate this discrete Fourier transform. Although we're focusing on the band from 902 to 928 megahertz, we, it's probably a good idea to specify a starting and ending frequency a bit beyond this range so we know what our spectrum is above and below the band of interest. So let's specify something like F start, the starting frequency. Let's say we're going to start at 820 megahertz and our ending frequency will be a little higher than 928. Let's say 980 megahertz. Then we also need to determine how many times we want to compute the DFT between this upper and lower frequency limit. Let's call the number of DFT calculations that we're going to make N F R E Q, short for frequency. Now if we choose a number that's too large for N frequency, the number of frequencies, it will take a really long time to obtain the spectrum of our source. But if we choose a number that's too small, the result will look very choppy when we try to plot it. So let's start with a reasonable number. It turns out we can perform this calculation pretty fast if we set n frequency equal to 1000. Lastly, in order to calculate the DFT, we need to know the value of omega. Here, omega shows up a few times. And omega is 2 pi f. So we need to know the value of omega at each frequency of interest where we're going to evaluate the DFT. So take a minute and try writing a loop that we can use to generate the omega array in our code. 